A friend of mine sent me a model orrery, which is a mechanical representation of the sun, the earth, and our moon. He makes these on a CNC laser machine, and he also makes his packaging. When I got this, I didn't want to tear the sticker, so I just opened it up with a pair of scissors. And this is very neatly packaged. Another piece of cardboard on top of that. And the instructions. Let's check this out of here. There are three pieces of plywood. All of this has been very intricately laid out and lettering has been engraved in there. And another little bit of packaging here. Open that up. And in here are all the dowel rods that have been cut to very precise length. And they're marked like that one's for the moon. indication where a gear or a wheel is supposed to be. They're marked to what length they are. This is 18 millimeter, 15, 9, and a couple of toothpicks. So those are going to go into a pill bottle. Keep track of those for a while. See, I got one here is trying to escape already. And when I open the instruction book, there's a little card that has a bunch of paper washers that have been laser cut. A piece of sandpaper to smooth out edges and stuff, and his business card. In Dooku Design. The booklet is very detailed, gives you step by step instructions for the assembly. One of the first things he warns about is when you go to push one of these out, it should come out very cleanly. But if it's hanging up someplace, don't force it. Figure out where it's hanging up. Take like a number 11 X-Acto blade and just nip the fibers that are still holding it. If you try to force this out of here, you can very easily splinter this plywood. This is all very well cut. I don't think there'll be much trouble getting it to come apart. That one comes out of there just like that. And that is all your scrap. When you get to the back, there's a diagram of all the different pieces and where they go. When this is in the CNC laser machine, this side faces up and this little bit of dark spot is the smoke that comes off the wood when it's burned. And the laser cut is usually just slightly tapered. This gap right here is going to be wider on this side than what it will be on the back. Not a whole lot of difference because this is pretty small. But you may find it easier to push these pieces out from the back side. Trying to collect those in a cup so I don't have them all over the shop. These look like they're going to go somewhere else. I'm just going to leave those alone for a while. With 220 on my random orbital sander, I gave this a real light going over. You have to be careful. This engraving is not very deep. I may have gotten a little too carried away right there. And you don't want to confuse the grain of the wood with the smoke. You can spend too much time in an area. And you can always go back by hand and touch up a little spot here and there if you missed it. But it does give it a cleaner appearance, and the wood is nice and smooth. All the pieces are cut out. A little magnification won't hurt a bit, especially when you're trying to find the little tabs that you need to cut loose on the back side so that these will pop out cleanly. And Baltic birch, the veneer can be a little bit brittle or you may find a spot in the Baltic birch where the veneer is not glued down as tight as other places. Generally speaking, this is excellent plywood. 
but there were a couple of places where I had some pieces come loose and I just glue them, let them sit there overnight and we'll see if I need to touch it up anymore tomorrow. I put all the small pieces in a pill bottle. My wooden dolls and stuff are in another bottle. All of my paper washers or spacers have been cut out or in this bottle. It keeps things from disappearing. And these are all the bits and pieces of remnants or whatever that have punched out of all these spaces. Put those to one side, make sure I didn't accidentally throw something good away. This is the first assembly for your orrery. And the hole in a lot of these pieces is octagonal. And this is a difficult installation to get this wood doll into that. This does not get glued to this shaft until the entire model is completed. You fine tune that position back and forth to where it runs correctly in this big gear. If you just start pushing on this, it's going to be easy to break one of those teeth off. So you can take a socket, and put that gear on top of there, and take another piece of wood and very squarely push down gently get that dowel to start going through that. And then you can shim that up a little bit more each time with some of these pieces of scrap that's got a hole in it until that lines up perfectly with that. This B10 lock is on there to keep this shaft from going back and forth once it's in its final position. And these are octagonal shape inside as well. And I broke several of these trying to get those on there. If you have access to some jeweler's files or take a piece of sandpaper and wrap it around a toothpick and open that up just a little bit to where it will slide on here a lot easier and without breaking. At some point in here when we're done, that will be adjusted to its final position, about like that. And you make sure that it turns freely. I strongly encourage you to download the digital set of these plans, the assembly instructions. It will be a lot easier to see the fine detail in the pictures. One such detail is on these parts here, which is BHS, and it has lines inscribed on it. And the correct position is for that one line to be straight up and down on top. And it's a little difficult to see that in the printed version of the instructions that comes with the orrery. These pieces have been glued in here and the glue has dried. I'm going to pull that back a little bit. I'm going to take a pencil. I'm just going to make a little pencil mark on the doll. And now I can slide that back and I put some wax on this end of the doll and on the doll where it's going to be inside these two pieces and that will lubricate that and that will run a lot better. This is referred to as OL2A and OL2B, the small link and the large link. And this piece ends up on top of the base and this ends up on the bottom of some of these pieces. When you get your model completed, you take the top assembly off and turn things to the right position to time the orrery to the year that you wish. Now, this was built in 2018, but you can retime it to 2021. When you lower that piece down on there, this piece goes inside here and that ends up as a dog clutch. So you want to be real careful and not break those teeth off. And that would go together. You have to be a little bit gentle. When this goes together, it pretty much has to go together all at one time and I'm referring to this base section. If you just glue a couple of these pieces and then wait for the glue to dry, then something is not going to be in alignment. When this is upside down, this is the first piece that goes on there, and these four corners are higher than these four pegs. So if you push down on that, you're probably going to crack something. So I took this little plaque and I put it under there to support that so that when I put glue 
in these places and then push this piece down on there, I was pushing on something firm. And I wasn't trying to bow or put stress on anything. When you turn this over like this, this piece is in the same plane as these four legs, the ends of the four legs. This is concave. So when you put that down like that, this piece is firmly against the table. Then you can put glue in these places and push that down. And that's a tight fit. And you want all of these surfaces to be square and tight together. Even if you test fit these pieces before you put glue on it, when you put glue on some of this wood, it can swell up or it can start setting up faster than you're working. So I did find that I could put this in here and I could squeeze on that and help squeeze some of that glue out of there and get those joints together. And that worked quite well. You just want to be gentle. You can put up quite a bit of force with one of these clamps. If you put this on a solid surface, this does not rattle. That is all in one plane. And one other point, you will probably get some glue squeeze out that will come up inside these fine teeth. You need to go in there and get all of that out of there because this piece has to be able to mesh in there and go all the way down to here. It's easier to clean it out now before it dries. This is pretty much complete. When I had these two sections together, you make sure that these gears spin like a top, real free. Then you put this and the two gears on the back side on there and you make sure it turns free. Then when you put them together, then you've got another opportunity for things to get bound up a little bit. But when you get done, it should turn like this. Then you have the base. Putting these dowels into these octagonal holes is a little bit of a challenge. Kind of make your fingers sore. But what I started doing, I used my arbor press. If you don't know what an arbor press is, Google it. It can be real handy. And I used it for putting the sun, the earth, and the moon together as well. Now this is all built. We have the sun and the earth and the moon. This was built in 2018, and so it was originally timed for 2018. They tell you in the instruction book how to time this, or you can time it for a different year. It tells you how to do that, too. I have one more thing I want to do to this, and then I'll call it complete. I have this all together now. On June the 23rd, the North Pole is closest to the sun. The northern hemisphere is experiencing summer. The southern is experiencing winter. On December 23rd, the North Pole is furthest from the sun. The northern hemisphere is now in winter, and the southern is experiencing summer. The different phases of the moon will appear in this window. This is quite accurate in terms of seasonal changes, phases of the moon, and this is operating very smoothly. This is a nice model. I would not call it a beginner's kit, but it is a fun build.